Welcome back again. This time we're going to talk about special function registers. Um, so what is a special function register? Uh, the screen right here probably doesn't help much. Um, instead, what I think the best way to get started is to uh, open up MPLABX. Uh, so go ahead and fire that up. You can pause the video if you need. Uh, make a new project. I'll do it here really quick. Um, if you need to pause the video, uh, that's fine. I'm um, going to be doing the same stuff that I always do. Uh, I'm going to pick uh, the microcontroller, 18F4520. So we kind of type that in every time. Um, standalone project. As far as uh, which uh, hardware tool you should use, um, if you've got your PIT kit plugged in, uh, go ahead and select uh, PIT kit. If you don't have it plugged in, just select the word PIT kit 3 and plug it in uh, later once we need it. I will be using the actual hardware today. Um, and then, of course, as for the compiler, pick the C18 compiler that you've got. As far as the project name, I'm going to call mine SFRs uh, and delays, because I know that I'm going to use delays later. Uh, first thing you want to do is uh, start up a new template. Uh, so I'll call this new template SFRs. Um, and what I wanted you to see first and foremost is what is a special function register? Um, and that's easy. Um, these variables that you see right here, uh, those are all special function registers. Um, the OSCON that you see up here, uh, these are special function registers. Um, don't worry about this, this bit syntax yet. Uh, we'll get to that in a later video lecture. Uh, but these are special function registers. And what they are is they quite simply, they control how the pick works, right? So there's a giant list of them here. Uh, these are kind of all the special function registers that the pick has. And they're used in different ways to control um, how the pick works, how the pins work, and things like that. Um, so here's just another, uh, another screenshot of different special function registers in the template. If you wanted to formally look at the definition, um, you could look at the Wikipedia version. Um, and it's just things that control the microprocessors, uh, especially the I.O., uh, things like the timer peripherals, so for timing that we'll get to later in the quarter, um, and also a lot of other details that I'm not worried about. Um, I just thought I'd put the definition up for reference. Things that these special function registers have to do is they have to decide um, what a pin does. Um, that's one of the things they do. So, for example, pin 2, it could be used as RA0, or it could be used as AN0, so it could be analog, it could be digital. Special function registers have to decide that. Some of the other pins, like, I don't know, pin 17 here, it could be a digital, um, it could be used as CCP1, um, or it could be used as this other thing that I don't even know what it is. Um, and special function registers do that. Just to kind of mention the analog and digital, uh, there are 13 pins that can be used as analog inputs. Um, analog input means like it can read a range of values from 0 to 5 and know like exactly what it is. So there are 13 pins that can be analogs. Um, and then there are 33 pins that can be digital. Uh, the digital name is just like RA um, or RA1, et cetera, et cetera. Um, there are 33 total. The only ones that can't be used are the master clear, which is pin 1, um, the two pins that we have connected to our programmer. Technically, you could use them, but we don't recommend it. Um, and you can't use the power and ground pins uh, either, uh, which 40 minus those 7 leaves you with 33 digital I.O. pins. And so special function registers drive those things. Um, specifically, what a special function register is, it is a variable. Uh, so it's very similar to a char variable. You set it just like a char variable. It's 8 bits just like a char variable. Only things that are different is that it's already declared. Uh, it's actually declared within the header file, so you don't have to you don't have to declare it. You don't say like char port B, you just start using it. And then the most important thing is that the PIC hardware uh, looks at how you've set it. There are a lot of different special function registers we're using in the class, so don't worry about that big list, but maybe you will worry about this, this shortened list. Um, so we'll learn about these uh, real soon for digital I.O. Uh, we'll learn about the clock one real soon, and then much, much later in the quarter uh, when we worry about interrupts, we'll worry about these. So there's really only like 20 or so we'll use in the course. So don't worry about the big list uh, with like all of them, because we're going to only actually worry about uh, some of these guys, right? 
Another thing I wanted to mention before I let you go on special function registers is that the library functions, a lot of the library functions we use uh, set them as well. Uh, so for example, there's a library function here. Uh, this library function is open ADC. This function you can call because it's declared within the adc.header file. So you can call it and you can use it. Um, but really all it's doing is setting special function registers. So if you knew um, what special function registers it was setting, um, you could actually just type them in you know, right away, right? So if you, knew, if you knew all these special words, you could just type it in. This one I've gone to the trouble of figuring out. Um, it has four parameters, sorry, three parameters config1, config2, and port config. The reason we use the library function is because it's a little bit more human readable, um, but all it does is it just sets uh, those three special functions. That's all it does. Um, and in fact, this bottom one, port config, you can see it just copied it straight in. Um, so we could have set that up without the library function. In fact, let's do it now. Um, it'll be easy enough. So. Uh, go into your project that you've made in MPLAB, uh, delete that library function, and instead uh, type this line. Type addcon1, oops, I typed it wrong, addcon1, um, and this is for no analog, uh, all digital. In fact, anytime I don't want analog, um, I don't mess with the library function, I just blow it away. Um, and I replace it with this one line of setting addcon1 uh, to 0x0f. Zero zero and if you actually were to go in and look at the special function register, uh, this description, by the way, came from the data sheet uh, for the PIC, which is on courseware, if you cared. It's like 200 pages long, though. Um, and what we, were, what we can do is before we were setting it up um, to give us four analog pins, so you can kind of count there's you know, four A's, but now what we're wanting to do is we're setting it for no analog pens, all digital. And I don't need a library function uh, to do that for me, so I'm just, uh, I'm just setting it directly. Cool, and if you wanted to, you could actually build it um, and make sure that it uh, compiles without error. Um, and if you're connected, oh, I hate this dialogue, say so never show that again. Um, if you're actually connected, it will program, it'll run. It won't do much exciting because all the LEDs are off, um, but it, it shows that there are no errors. All right, so that is special function registers. Um, let's go ahead and uh, cut this one off, um, and we'll come back next time, and we'll talk about uh, specifics for GPIO. All right, see you then.